A few months ago, we did a wonderful recipe called a sea pie. And the funny thing was, it didn't have any seafood in it at all. Today's pie is just the opposite. It's very fishy. It's called a saltfish pie. Thanks for joining us today as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century. Salt is one of the main preservation techniques of the 18th century. They salted beef, they salted pork, they salted vegetables, they salted fruit. But today's recipe is using salt fish. And with any of these salted things, the weird part is, okay, I preserved it, now it's all really, really salty. How do I use it? How do I cook with it? And finding recipes with these salted provisions can be a little odd because Generally, they don't talk about that in the cookbooks very much. Today's recipe is a little different. This one uses salt cod. Now, they call it salt fish. Salt fish in the 18th century wasn't always cod, but probably two thirds of it was salted cod. And most of the salted fish we can still find today, salt cod. Here's the recipe. It's from the complete cook, James Jenks, 1769. It does show up in other cookbooks, but I think this one is the, is the best recipe to do for us. It says, lay a side of salt fish in a pan of water till it be tender. Then drain it and lay it upon a dresser. Take off all the skin, pick the meat clean from the bones, mince it small. Take the crumb of two French rolls, cut them in slices, boil them up with a quart of new milk. Break the bread very fine with a spoon, to which put the salt fish minced, a pound of melted butter, two spoonfuls of parsley shredded very fine, a half a grated nutmeg, a little beaten pepper, and three spoonfuls of mustard. Mix it all well together, make a good crust, lay the paste all over the dish, and lay in the fish and the other ingredients, cover it up, and bake it an hour. So we can see here that we need to deal with this salt fish. We have to get the salt off of it. We have to sort of soak it for a while because salt fish has salt encrusted all over the outside of it. And we need to get rid of that as well as sort of leach out some of the salt that's uh, in there in, that, in the, uh, the flesh, right? So we can change the water a couple times if we need to. We can even sort of uh, let our, our salt fish soak too long and take out all the saltiness of it. Some recipes say you, know, you might need to actually add salt back in it. I haven't had that problem. Salt cod's pretty darn salty. Now this definitely does not cut like fresh fish. Let me tell you, this is very firm flesh on this. Uh, after, the, after the salting, I think all those fibers kind of lock together and it doesn't seem to matter just how much soaking you do, it's still kind of tough. Uh, you know, even the recipe says something like, soak it till it's tender. Well, it's never gonna get tender like fresh fish. So it definitely takes mincing. This, this flesh does not just fall apart. You gotta, you gotta work it. Once I have this all minced up, then we're gonna start working on the bread and the milk part. We have to take that bread and turn it into breadcrumbs and boil it in milk. Our breadcrumbs have boiled in the milk and this has turned into a wonderful gloopy mess, which is what we're looking for, right? This is what it should turn into, something like 
a loose oatmeal. Now we have our other ingredients we're gonna to add to this and we have our, our uh, parsley that I have chopped fine. Directions call for fine chopping. So we want it to be very broken up and I'm not sure how much I'm gonna put in here, but I, I wanna see that color as well as of course flavor, uh, the taste of it. This is a boring looking pie with a white fish and you know, white bread crumbs. So we want some color in there. We have some pepper that has already been ground up nice and fine. And we can use a good deal of pepper in there. Mustard, something I normally don't put in dishes a lot, but it does show up in the 18th century. We don't know in the recipe whether they're calling for already pre-mixed mustard or ground mustard, but I'm pretty sure in the context that ground mustard is what you want here, not the already prepared like a condiment. So there's our mustard. I think it called for three spoons full. This is about a half a recipe that we're doing here. It's, it seems like every recipe in the 18th century for a pie makes two pies. So we're gonna cut this in half. That was about a spoon and a half. Uh, let's see, we'll mix that up a little bit. Um, we need some nutmeg. It called for a whole nutmeg. We don't need that much nutmeg, but some. Um, that should do it. We don't need a lot of nutmeg in there. We need some uh, melted butter. It calls for a, a pound of melted butter. Of course, I have here about a half a pound of melted butter. We're starting to get a nice flavorful smell coming out of this. We get the, the butter, uh, the parsley, the pepper, and even that mustard. Really, really good combination. So I'm, I'm excited about seeing where this goes. Before I put the fish in, I want to test it out to see if it got too salty. Yeah, this is uncooked, but you know, it's fish. It's pretty salty. It's not gonna need extra salt. Even though this soaked for quite a while, still pretty salty. So yeah, the fish was a little salty. If you wanna pull more of that salt out, you need to change the water more often and heat that up just a little bit. You don't want to boil it in water, um, but if you heat the water up, it'll help dissolve more of that salt out. You can change the water a couple of different times. Different recipes go over that a little bit more than this one. They figured in this recipe, you already knew how to kind of desalt your fish. So, I, you know, the thing is with this recipe, there's so many more ingredients, all that milk, all the breadcrumbs, some of those other flavors, uh, they're gonna help take the edge off of a little bit too much salt in that. So it's all right if the, if the fish has got a bit of salt in this because there's so much more to this than just the fish. This, these are the, uh, the guts of the pie here. It's ready to go into that. So let me get the pie shell. Our pie is all assembled and it's ready to go. The recipe calls for one hour in the oven. If you're doing this in your modern kitchen, I say 350 degrees ought to do it just about right. So let's get this one in the oven and find out what it turns out like. Our pie's out of the oven and I wanted this to sort of solidify a little bit so it came out as a nice pie piece. We let it cool off and now it's ready to try out. Now, if you want it to solidify 
and you want to eat it when it's still warm, then you might want to slice it and then rewarm those pieces a little bit. Uh, but I think this is going to be good whether it's hot or cold. Here's our pie. And boy, out of the oven, smelled great. Very tasty if you like fish pie. So I'm having a hard time describing this one because we don't have any really good equivalent in our uh, modern day foods that we have here in North America. The, the texture is very kind of nice and smooth on the inside. We get a, a nice fish flavor that comes in with this. Um, the smoothness and the, the texture mixed with the fish, it's almost like it's mixed with mashed potatoes. Uh, I would, if you gave it to me and I didn't know it was breadcrumbs, yeah, I would say eh, maybe mashed potatoes. And then uh, we get this, there's so much of that, that bread and the milk in there. Truly, it's like a savory bread pudding that's inside of this pie. So it's it's really kind of good now this is this is eating it cold and i think it's very very edible cold but i think if it was warmed up it'd be even better maybe think about a crab cake pie i think that might get us close to the idea of what this is like if you'd like another great experiment in fish pie check out this episode this one was really fun and thanks for joining us today as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century <laughs>